Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's that time of the week where we get to take a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves right now on Christmas Eve. Let's check them out. All right, let's see what we got here. Actually got a, a fair number of higher end pieces today. It's probably a good time of the year for that. Maybe you got a little money coming in for Christmas, maybe a little bit of stimulus money coming your way. Got some cool things uh, that you might be able to put some of those dollars towards. Uh, but I'm gonna start with new exclusive versions of the Fox Suru that you can only get right here at the Knife Center. Now you may be wondering why I'm holding two of these up because they look uh, almost identical. Um, they do in fact, but the front scales on each of these, one is G10 and one is a marbled carbon fiber. You don't really see too much of that carbon fiber because they both have this dimpled golf ball texture on the front, which I actually really like. I was a little skeptical myself before they came in, but they turned out really nice. Both of them are the same price. They come in just under 150 and the carbon fiber one is just going to be a hair lighter, 2.3 versus 2.4 ounces, uh, but it's a nice Nice texture, like I mentioned. It definitely gives you some more surface area so you have more grip, which is especially useful on a smaller knife like this, but it doesn't bite. Like you can push your, your thumb along there without it being painful or, or grabby or anything like that. It's got just enough of that texture to give you that firmer grip. Blade steel is N690. It's about a 2.3 inch blade, so you're under two and a half inches, but you can still get a decent hold on it because you've got that nice finger choil right there. And even me with my slightly larger than average hands, I can get all four of my fingers onto the handle of this knife. Because of that, you can put the blade to work quite nicely. You got an almost full flat grind with this black stone washed finish. Whole thing is rather blacked out in fact. Now the frame here is aluminum. It's got those same drilled holes from the original Suru. That's kind of what inspired, I think, this golf ball texture on the front. As you move that front around, you can see a little bit of the uh, kind of the glint of the carbon fiber. You can actually see more of it looking down from the spine. It's, uh, it's a little interesting. Rather than just a flat black on the inside, you get a little bit of shimmer. We've also got a nice wire deep carry pocket clip. So not only is this a knife that's short enough length that it's gonna be able to be carried just about anywhere, you're gonna be able to carry it very discreetly as well because deep carry, black, and a very classy looking clip to boot. Now the flipping action, also nice. Ball bearings in the pivot, as you'd expect. Made in Italy, designed by Jesper Vaknez, and that actually gives us a good transition into the next knife. We've got a new Italian-made fixed blade from Giant Mouse, which is, of course, the collaborative project between Jesper Vaknez and Jens Anso. And these are, like I said, made in Italy. Uh, I'm not sure who's making them for Giant Mouse. It might be Lion Steel. Uh, but anyway, there's a lot of good manufacturers over there in Maniago, and you've got all the hallmarks of their types of construction on this blade. Nice crown spine all the way around, green micarta handles, nice fine fit and finish, full flat grind, nice sharp edge, you're ready to go. Prices on these, they come in about 185. Blade steel is M390, about 3.6 inches of it with this nice uh, straight back profile. I have a little hint of a curve here. Uh, it's actually, it's kind of hard to tell a little bit. Well, let me, let me do the test. Let me lay it on there. Doot, doot, doot. It is a straight backed profile. Um, so you have some of that kind of Puko inspiration, but it's almost a trailing point. In fact, I think it's gonna behave kind of like a trailing point uh, if you're using this for hunting or any kind of game processing like that, because as you hold the knife, of course, that edge is going up and away. That same shape is gonna make it really nice uh, for food prep as well, or even a gentleman's steak knife. We've got a little bit of jimping here out for your index finger to push on and get some nice cuts when you're doing, when you're slicing through the meat. But it feels really good in the hand. You got just a classic uh, Ansoe, Voxy type of shape. Uh, they have a style and when they come together, you come up with something really nice like this. Now it does come with a sheath. It's a nice leather pouch, as you can see here and you've got a dangler loop there on the back. No secondary strap, uh, so if you wanted to carry this lower without the dangler, you might need to get something else made, but it's really nicely put together. The welt is very finely finished along the edge. Just a quite, quite complimentary piece. All right, now we're going to jump into the way high end of things now, and it's something that if I didn't work here, I probably would have never been able to hold. We have got the new Deadlock Model Bs from Grant and Gavin Hawk. 
and the fact that these didn't fly right off the shelves and I'm able to actually show it to you today. Hopefully it'll still be in stock by the time we post this video. This is such a special knife and it better be because this costs the better part of $2,000. Now, what's so special about this knife? For one thing, the feel. It's just one of those untangibles. As soon as you pick something up, you can tell how nicely it's made, how special it is. And this knife definitely has it. Now on top of that is the claim to fame of this model. It's the only out the front automatic knife I know of with absolutely zero blade play, which is just an innovation to say the least. Every OTF out there, apart from this one, always has a little bit of blade wiggle, some more than others. And that's just kind of accepted. That's the way of the game. But this guy, no way. It is rock solid. Like if you were to uh, think of like the Sabenza of the OTF world, this would be it. No play whatsoever. It's also got a really nice feel in operation. We'll talk about the, uh, the slider here for a second. What I really like about it is you don't see any of the track of the forward and, and backward motion. So it essentially makes this button look like it's floating and it's nice and easy to operate. It's not sharp. It doesn't dig into your fingers and just listen to this. Sublime, you guys, it, it feels good in the hand. There's a nice almost two stage click. You get a clunk clunk as it uh, moves out. Clunk's probably a, a bad adjective, but it's so satisfying. That floating button is really nice. Now this one is a marbled carbon fiber. We've also got some uh, standard carbon fiber. You got a bit of traction here at the back in, for, in the form of jimping of this metal inlay with the Hawk logo, flipping it over, some more jimping traction points there, and a nice spring-loaded clip. So you can kind of pop that open as you're going into your pocket, and it's gonna provide the retention you need. Now, of course, all these fancy details are nice, but we've also got some high performance blade steel here. CPM 20 CV, all American made, about three and a half inches, double edged as you can see. So you've got about seven inches of sharpened edge there. Now, if it's too rich for your blood, I get it. It's too rich for mine too, as much as I absolutely adore this knife. I'm just happy I got to kind of hold on to one and, and flick it open a few times. Just a few more. Really cool. And we do have a few in stock while we're filming this. We've also got a, uh, a pretty hefty new batch of William Henry's, keeping the fancy train going. Uh, I just pulled two here. The first is the Gentac Tact coming in about 600. This has definitely got kind of that William Henry fine art feel to it, but it's in one of their, uh, I think, more EDC friendly configurations, I would say. It's not super ostentatious. It's just a little bit ostentatious. Blade length, about three and a quarter. You've got that Damascus patterned blade with a VG10 core. We've got a single position thumb stud here, as well as the right side button lock, and both of those feature a cashmere topaz inlay. Frame itself is titanium, blue anodized in this case, and you've got a nice deep carry pocket clip on the back as well. Again, just a really fine, fine piece. They're handmade in the USA, so the fact that you can get something kind of so blingy, so fancy, with American made construction for about 600. Honestly, that is not that bad at all. This next knife is a little bit smaller, but a quite a bit more expensive. This one is the Kestrel Copper Canyon compact coming in at 975. And this is probably my favorite out of the new batch we just got. It immediately grabbed my eye. I mean, just check that thing out. I mean, the Damascus blade here alone is really cool because you've got copper layers in that Damascus blade with a VG5 core in this case. Blade length is only a little bit over two inches, but it's got a really nice shape to my eye for small EDC stuff. But the materials on the handle here are just fantastic. You've got a Mokume bolster and an orange spalted beach for the inlays. Just really great and looks fantastic next to that copper. And then you've got a smoky quartz inlay here on the button lock and on the thumb stud. And I didn't mention it on the other knife, but some really intricate milling surrounding that gemstone as well. On the back, you've got what looks like a bale, but it doesn't actually rotate. Nice leather thong off of there. And then you've actually got a leather carrying case for this knife because you don't have a pocket clip in this case. Both of them come with a nice wooden display case though. Man, just, I am so in love with this one. Just really, really nice, just over an ounce, so very light, would be very easy to carry and make just a phenomenal gentleman's knife. 
All right, if you're gonna be spending uh, the better part of a grand on a knife, you may want something bigger, which is where this next one will come in. This is the Shiragorov Model 111 Outdoor Special Edition, coming in just under 1100 right now. Now what Shiragorov has going for them, and the reason they're able to charge prices this high, is impeccable fit and finish. Just, they're so well put together, just about flawless every time. And one of the things I like about them is you can get a really big blade, in this case, four and a quarter inches of Vanax 37, and the grinds are so precise. The edges all along are nice, super thin, razor sharp. It's just, it's a hard thing to do in a production level knife, and Shiragorov nail it pretty much every time. Now, the reason this is a outdoor special edition is one, the handles. You've got orange G10 inlays in a green carbon fiber, so that green and orange has a nice look. They've also omitted the pocket clip on this design, so you don't have that potential hot spot there when you're gripping this knife for use. And there's certainly plenty of length there, as you folks know, slightly larger than average hands. I've still got enough handle there. I could even be wearing a nice heavy set of winter gloves and still have a full grip without actually slipping off the edge. Now, in lieu of that pocket clip, they're going to give you a nice leather belt sheath instead. But it slides in from the bottom first, and then that's gonna fold over. I'm not gonna stretch the leather out too much because uh, I don't wanna do that to you. But it's also, what I like, it has a horizontal belt loop on the back. Uh, so you're gonna be able to carry this larger knife pretty unobtrusively, even without filling up your pockets, because that's gonna ride right along the horizontal stretch of your belt. I really like that. But since I closed the knife, that gives me an opportunity now to open it. Flipper, multi-row bearing system, impressive action. Really, really nice. And uh, just one of the many great Shiragoros we have in stock right now. But this one being a limited edition and just in the building, definitely worth checking out. All right, now if you want that size of knife, but you don't have that much money to spend, but still want to spend a decent chunk of change, New model here from Andrew De Andre De Villiers, ADV Knives, of course. This is a new version of his Alpha Flipper coming in at about 460 right now. Blade length is four and a half inches, S35VN. And it's the whole knife has kind of that ADV overbuilt kind of macho in your face style, which is a good thing. I don't mean that in a bad way. But what I like about the blade here is it's not that it's toned down because it certainly isn't but this is still a very practical shape. Even though you've got that recurve and a lot of belly here, I like the shape overall. The tip is gonna be very usable and you got a nice high flat grind for some really good slicing geometry if you're actually putting this knife to use. Feeling the hand is quite nice. My hands fit right in there between the, uh, the front section of the flipper and the back of the beak right there. Plenty enough length for me when I'm not wearing gloves. But the handle construction itself is titanium. We've got marbled carbon fiber inlays on both sides, as well as on the button lock. And it's this rectangular tab here, as opposed to a circular tab, that will release the button locking action there. And as you can see, it flips closed quite nicely. Now there is a secondary safety right here behind it, so you can actually lock it in the closed position. And see if I remember this correctly. First of all, it flips open quite nice. But yes, it also locks open into the open position, so you can't accidentally press that button lock down, which I know some folks, sometimes that is a concern. But the fact that even though my, uh, my thumb might hit that button, if I'm really bearing down, that safety is a nice little extra bit of peace of mind. As far as opening goes, I did show you that it flipped quite nicely. You can also push that button down, give it a little bit of wrist action, same way on the close. You can even do a uh, middle finger flick or a thumb open, thanks to that really nice blade cut out there with, I don't know, I guess I'd call it crenellations because they kind of, they it's like the top of a castle from one side to the next. It's kind of offset and it looks really, really cool. But in addition to that, of course, it gives you a little bit of extra traction on your thumb. We've got a nice milled pocket clip here on the back as well. It's kind of the last, uh, last detail I can think of to call out. It's just another kind of really over the top in a good way awesome fun knife. Now if your tastes run a little more restrained, these next two are probably more up your alley. Uh, two from Custom Knife Factory. This one is the Empat coming in at 305. Much classier look here overall as you can see. Kind of a self-bolstered titanium construction with marbled carbon fiber onlays on both sides of this knife. Blade length about 3.6 M390 steel. We've got a nice two-tone finish going on 
with a satin finish on the flats and stone washed grinds. Really nice blade shape here too. Not quite a, uh, not quite a scaled down Shiro, but it's a nice kind of classy drop point. It's just a hint of a harpoon tip right here. Not so much that it's kind of in your face or aggressive, but it does provide a little bit of a nice place if you're doing something kind of choking up with your, with your index finger to use that tip a little bit differently. Lockup is quite nice. Of course, you've got a nice hardened steel insert there, as you would expect. Ball bearings in the pivot. Nice, good to go. Nice milled pocket clip here too. I like the fact that it slopes down pretty, uh, pretty significantly here towards the end. It's not kind of jutting out or sticking up. It's just a nice svelte execution of a nice milled pocket clip. For an even more restrained look than this, and I actually like this profile even better, it's the new Meta from Custom Knife Factory coming in at an even 300 right now. Contoured titanium for the handles. They feel nice, very good. Nice and slim for carry though. They're not super chunky, so it's gonna be very easy to take with you. And the blade shape, I love it. Nice continuous curve to the belly, kind of a graceful spine treatment here. Three, just over three and a half inches of M390, same two-tone finish we just looked at. But it's just, it's a shape that looks like it's ready to work for me. It's just ready to slice and you don't have a nice thick blade to get in the way. It's just ready to go. Milled pocket clip again. Again, nice subtle uh, slope there on the back. What's nice here though is, unlike the previous design, no external screw for that pocket clip. This is gonna actually uh, be mounted internally, I guess, although I can't see where the screw comes out on the inside, but it's a nice touch there, nice clean look overall. And then of course, again, ball bearings in the pivot, nice flipping action. All right, next up, we've got a new design from Best Tech, uh, and it's a new design from Todd Knife and Tool for Best Tech. Uh, you may remember their malware flipper from earlier, which kind of bears a, a little bit of family resemblance to this particular knife. This is the Exploit coming in about 238. Blade length here, about three and a half inches, S35VN. Nice, almost full flat grind, uh, but a very interesting shape here. In a way, it, it almost reminds me of some Spyderco stuff out there in terms of the kind of cutting experience you're gonna get from it, because it's kind of a leaf-shaped slash drop point type of profile. Again, full flat grind, which you see a lot in, uh, in Spyderco's offerings. But here you get it S35VN and a titanium front flipper in this case, not a rear flipper. Now, uh, regulars of this channel know I'm not always the best at front flippers, but I haven't really had much of a problem with this one. It works quite well. A few different finishes for the handles uh, and blade for that matter are available. This one's the stonewashed handle, uh, stonewashed titanium with satin finished blade. We've got uh, some black versions and a nice flamed titanium version as well. That's quite nice. Lockup is nice and solid. Blade opens really easily, as you saw. And if you don't want to do that front flipper thing, you've also got the thumb cut out there for a few different varieties of opening, including that uh, Spidey flick, maybe. Some more, some more Spyderco connections in there. But it's a cool knife, no matter how you slice it. The pocket clip's kind of a nice design, too. You got some kind of interlocking waves going on. Yeah, just a really nice piece and uh, a little bit more affordable than some of the things we've looked at so far. All right, next up, we've got something from Wii Knife Company. This is the Snex Mini Buster coming in at 289. And there's a, uh, a satin version as well as this version, which uh, we're calling antique bronzed aluminum because even though it looks black, kind of the edges are you know, tumbled or softened a little bit. And you see a bit of that brass kind of popping through. Has a nice rustic aged classy look all at the same time. Almost three and a half inches of blade here as well, 20 CV steel in this case. And this is gonna be a nice stout working blade. As you can see, obviously, nice sheep's foot profile. And they've kept the, uh, they, they've resisted the urge to kind of swedge the tip and kept the full thickness there at the, uh, at the spine where it starts to drop. So you have kind of that full strength out there near the tip right behind the point of the blade. Now the spine itself is swedged a little bit, so if you're powering through a cut, you do kind of remove that little point of drag so you can move through uh, or move around a cut a little more effectively. But really with this completely straight edge here, it's ready to just power through cuts. That's what it's built to do. And it's built to do it while looking pretty good too. Again, titanium frame lock flipper. You've got the, uh, the hardened insert there in the, uh, out the lock bar itself. You got the ball bearings. 
you got the nice flipping action and you got a nice milled titanium pocket clip as well. All comes together in a really, really nice package. All right, if you're looking for kind of similar type of cutting experience, but you don't have that much money to spend, new versions of the Gerber Fastball Cleaver Flipper are now in. Uh, regular price on these about 145, uh, but right now, actually, while we're filming this, we're in the middle of a Gerber sale, which means not for very long. But this is available for a, yeah, a, an even better price than that. I think about 115 right now, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. Blade length three inches here, CPM 20 CV again. So not quite as long and not quite as thick as that mini buster, but it's going to be a little bit better of a slicer and you've still got that great material for that nice long edge retention. The black coating there is just for looks. This is not a knife that needs corrosion protection, but it looks really good against the Coyote Tan anodized aluminum handles right there. Now, these are made in the USA and they've got belt ball bearings. They've got ball bearings in the pivot as well. And ever since the original Warncliffe fastball was introduced, we've been very very happy with the action that Gerber's managed to uh, to put into these knives and we're happy to see them made in the USA as well. Two position pocket clip, it's not deep carry, just a standard kind of black oxide finished clip. This is not a painted clip. Nice lightweight carry, uh, comes in eh, just under three ounces, so it's definitely not going to weigh you down and you've definitely got a cool, cool blade shape to go along with it. All right, next an even more affordable Gerber. Uh, this one's not made in the USA, but this is the new larger version of the highbrow coming in about 45 bucks right now. Blade is a 7CR stainless, so not the uh, not the reigning champ in edge retention for sure, but it is going to be easy to maintain, of course, and it's got a nice stonewashed finish with this hollow grind here. Blade length is about three and three eighths. Good, uh, good all around everyday size. And of course, the claim to fame with this knife is it is a crossbar lock equipped knife with an assisted opening action. You can see there at the uh, the little push required to close it. You've also got a flipper to actuate it right in front of this spine mounted safety. And because of where they place that all the controls and everything on this knife is very left hand friendly as well. The pocket clip is reversible. The crossbar lock is accessible from either side. And of course, the safety and the flipper very easy to do with either hand. There's a few different colors right now. This is the sage green aluminum handle. It's got a nice orange backspacer, uh, but there's some uh, some subtle blues, some grays and blacks, I think, as well for you to choose from. All right, last knife on the table today, and uh, certainly last but not least, and the only reason I pushed it towards the end is you've seen this configuration on a number of knives from Spyderco this year. I think this is the final one to uh, at last arrive. It's the K390 Indela, coming in right now about 128. K390, of course, is sits right at the apex of what's possible these days in terms of edge retention. It's way up there. Not a stainless blade, so make sure you keep it uh, keep it dry, keep it cleaned off. But all your dollars are going towards that high performance blade material. Essentially, they've gone and kept a uh, one of the simpler lightweight style of handles on these knives, so you're not paying a bunch extra for like titanium or other stuff you might not want. If you really want uh, just a hard, long lasting edge on a working knife, it's better for uh, the majority of your dollars to go towards that rather than the rest of the knife as well. But the rest of the knife's no slouch, don't get me wrong. You've got nice traction from their bi directional texturing, four position pocket clip, strong back lock, mid mounted, and it has the David Boy dent there as well. Let's you really put that blade to use, which has, again, that great Spider Co cutting geometry, full flat grind, easy opening with either hand. Actually, it's kind of funny, kind of shares a similar blade profile or cutting profile to that uh, that Gerber from just a second ago, but certainly in complete different leagues in terms of performance. That's for sure. Now, if you're not familiar with the Indela, I kind of like to think of it as uh, kind of the de facto knife size of today in the line of Spyderco knives, uh, the Spyderco lightweights, including the Delica and the Endura. It sits right between that smaller and larger knife, respectively. Coming in with a blade length here about 3.4 inches. It's just kind of right sized in a way. It feels really good. All right, last but not least, ugh, our 2021 paper catalog is now in stock and ready to ship. These come in about 20 bucks. And as you can see, a ton of pages here. I haven't even counted them. I, uh, I should probably know this bit of information for you. Over 2,000 pages. 
weighs a number of pounds. And you may be asking, why does an internet website want you to buy a paper catalog? And that's because these just can be fun to leaf through. Um, you know, throw it in the, uh, the bathroom, on the coffee table, and you just leaf through it. Find some cool stuff you may not have ever seen before. There's even a lot of stuff in here that hasn't even made it onto our website. So I know there's some folks out there who like to buy those every year. And if you're one of them, there you go. They're in stock right now. And that is it. That's all I've got to show you here on this Christmas Eve. I hope you're all uh, just about uh, safely through 2020. I know it has been a hard year on pretty much everyone out there, but happy holidays to you. Merry Christmas. I hope you're staying safe, sane, and sanitary. I'll bring that tagline back one more time. But if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, in the meantime, we will leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And while you're over there, make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program, because if you're gonna spend your hard-earned money on one of these knives, especially one of these higher-end ones, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.